the options. And some of y'all, you know, a lot, I saw a lot of y'all in the chat that were like, yo, options, I'm real scared of options. But, you know, with the risk that's involved in doing so, this dude, man, he done, he done, he done mastered the plays on options. And uh, I'm like, yo, I, we got to have you come in, teach this young dude, man, black brother, making a plays, making money, teaching a whole lot of people how to do it at the same time. And I'm just honored that he accepted it uh, to be able to, uh, to come here and teach us today. So I want all of y'all to put some rules, kangaroos in the chat. I want all y'all to show some love. I want all of y'all to, 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 to clap, you know, and, and uh, let's bring on, let's bring on my brother, Mr. Aristotle Investments, man. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? I'm excited to be here. Shout out to uh, Prince Donnell for one, for um, putting out an NFT project for the culture. That's for one. I respect it and I stand behind it. So I'm going to show you guys one of my uh, exclusive presentations that I do, right? So I made this presentation for my tour, but I haven't toured since October. So, yeah. So Aristotle Warner Jr., that's actually my name. My middle name is Aristotle. My first name is Makarios, which stands for, uh, they're all Greek. Uh, Aristotle was a Greek philosopher. So I'm named after my father. I was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm 25 years old. And I spent, uh, and I'm, at least five years to six years in the game investing, but option trading, I'm about four years in the game. Uh, I did six years active duty in the army and I'm a serial entrepreneur. So that's what I classify myself as because yes, I'm primarily an option trader, but I'm also a specialist at other businesses and growing businesses in general. So that's what I do. I'm a, I'm a business grower. Give me a drink of water. So how did somebody draw something on them? Now let me go to the uh, presentation. Let me get this off. So I wanna go straight into what we're going to be talking about. So let's get into it. Um, I just need to go over some basic stock market lingo. For one, let me look at the chat real quick. Uh, put a me if you don't know anything about the stock market at all and need a refresher on some of the basic terminology and lingo just say me i'm reading i'm looking at the chat right now are y'all good on that they say me cool all right cool so we're going to go it's going to be quick we're going to go over some basic terminology right and then we're going to hop into candlesticks um support and support and resistance all of that right so basic stock market terminology Stocks are the capital raised by a business or corporation through the issue and subscription of shares, right? So let's just say Apple is worth $130, right? That means I will literally be paying $130 for the share. So you are the outright owner of it with no expiration date, right? So shares are pieces of the company that you own outright with no expiration date and buying shares makes you a shareholder, correct? Now you don't have to write down these terms you know, because I believe once I say something, people get them, but I will let you know what should be, you know, written down and whatnot. But, you know, feel free to write down things if you want to screenshot. So let's keep going. So bulls and bears, right? The, in the stock market, the term bullish and bearish, right? Bulls strike up and bears strike down. So uh, a smart man pretty much named things going up by bulls because he noticed the fighting attack style of the bulls and bears. When they stand up, they strike down. So that is why you will see the term bullish and bear. So remember, bull strike up, bear strike down. So whenever something, when I'm referring to something as bullish or bearish or bulls, bear, anything in that term, you know what that means. Now, these. Trade is simply when you buy or sell a stock. Day trade, buying or selling a stock within the same day. Swing trade, holding a stock overnight or longer, correct? 
long, bullish on the stock. I think it's going up short. So if I say I'm long on something, think of a quarterback throwing the ball saying go long. It's positive, right? Short, um, you know, maybe they, you know, want to run the ball for one yard. You know how it go. So short is bearish. Long is bullish, correct? Calls. Calls are an option trade that bet on the stock to go up. And puts are an option trade that bet on the stock to go down. Okay. So I heard many of you say that uh, for one, option trading is risky. Now, let me tell you why this is safer than going to Vegas, than doing anything else. So you go, you have a better chance of doing this because the odds are in your favor versus anything else I've ever seen, even crypto. Even crypto, in my opinion, the odds are speculative. But with options, uh, they allow us to control our odds. And that is what I like about it. It's betting, but it's betting based on what you want to do, if that makes sense. You have full control, but you have to know exactly what you're playing and what you're doing, right? So shares, like I said, are pieces of the company on outright with no expiration date. And you have volume. Volume is the number of shares of a stock traded during a particular time period, normally measured in average daily trading volume. So we will go over volume, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys all of the game, right? And we're even gonna look at some charts after we go over some candlesticks next. Okay, so those are some basic terminology. Lingo, lingo, lingo. So I'm from the A, you know, we say all types of things like shouty, like, um, you know what I'm saying? All types of things, you know, uh, even when I, even my lingo now, as you can tell, I have a Southern accent. So even in the stock market, there's lingo. Uh, in the tax field, there's lingo. and crypto, there's lingo, right? So let's go over some lingo, right? Common lingo we use, scalp. If I say I am scalping something, quick day trades, correct? If I say I am swinging something, I'm holding something overnight. TP, take profits. BP, buying power. Hold, that means hold the stock longer, long and short. We went over that. Gap is when like, okay, our earnings could be gap. So you know how Amazon recently or Facebook, Facebook had a large gap down. So it's when uh, contracts or shares aren't traded. It's through news or something like that. So Facebook gapped down. And you remember when Google gapped up during earnings. So a gap is pretty much when shares go up or down, but they're not trading traded during the regular hours. OK, and sometimes there can be regular hour gaps. Right. But they're very rare. Last time I seen them happen a lot was 2017. So that should tell you how long I've been doing this or studying this. Right. So uh, HOD, you got earnings report, ER, which we just talked about with Facebook, Amazon, all of that ER. Then you got high of the day. And then that's just the highest price of that day. So literally the highest point of that day. So remember in the stock market, the stock market opens from 9.30 Eastern time, New York time to 4 p.m. And then you have your central time, then you have uh, mountain time, and then you have Pacific time, right? So all you gotta do is base it on whatever New York time is, right? So from 9.30 to 4 p.m. is when the stock market is open, right? So the high of the day will be the highest point of that day. And then the low of the day will be the lowest point of that day. And then you have the word FOMO. FOMO is fear of missing out, right? And then you have zero days to expiration. That would be like today. Today, I traded zero days to expiration contracts. Now, in options, contracts usually expire on Fridays. And then it'll be that rare occasion where they expire on a Thursday because of or Wednesday because of Thanksgiving or something like that. Because, you know, Thanksgiving is on a Thursday. So there will be a rare, rare occasion. And it's usually around the holidays. Like, let's just say Christmas Eve lands on a Friday. Then, of course, contracts will expire on that Thursday. So always remember that. And then we have risk management. Risk management is a huge part of option trading, which makes it less risky. So I'm going to give you guys some strategies at the end 
to learn how to stay profitable doing this because I have created a science in my head to this, right? So we got to go in and now it's time to talk about candlesticks. For one, put a yes if you understood or following me. Put a yes if you're, on, if you're following me right now. Cool, cool, cool. So you guys are smart. You guys are smart. You bought the NFT, right? Now, candlesticks. Let's hop right into it. So now we're going to get straight into the point. I don't like to spend too much time on lingo because I believe you guys are grown. And when I say these, when I say the lingo, you guys will get it the first time, right? So now we're going to get into the uh, what's going on. So first of all, put a me if you have no idea what candlesticks are. You have no idea how to trade them. And this is your first time getting a lesson on this. They said easy. I'm saying me. Some people saying it right. Didn't get that. Could you try again? Siri. Sorry, I can't help it. Can y'all hear that? Let me make sure Siri not doing that. All right, there we go. So candlesticks, let's get, I have to go over this for the beginners, right? Because this is important. So let's get right into it. If candlesticks can be on any time frame, a five minute, a one hour daily. So if I say, if this is a candlestick, right? All candlesticks on the five minute chart will represent five minutes. All candlesticks on the hourly chart will represent one hour. All candlesticks on the daily chart will represent one day correct now let's get right into it so if we're looking at the five minute chart every candlestick represents five minutes so within five minutes prices open here so let's just say prices open at ten dollars right and then prices went as low as eight dollars right then prices went as high as fifteen dollars but closed at 12 correct so this was 10 the 10 was the open so in five minutes and the low was eight eight dollars and the high was 15 but it closed at 12. now in order for it to be a green candlestick the close must be higher than the opening price so it opened at 10 but closed at 12 but went as high as 15 dollars and the relationship between the open and the close is called your real body correct and same here the relationship, the, the reason why this is a red candle is because let's just say it opened at 12 and then went as high as 15 and then went as low as eight, but closed at 10. You see what I'm saying? So now 10 is the closing price, but the opening price was 12. In a relation, and remember, in order for it to be a red candlestick, the close must be lower than the opening price. So remember, in order for it to be red, it must open and close higher than what it opened. In order for it to be green, my fault. In order for it to be green, it must close higher than it opened. And in order for it to be red, it must close lower than it opened. And then you have your high and then your low. And these are called your wicks or shadows. Okay. So uh, put a yes if you understood that. Put a yes if you understood that quick crash course on candlesticks. Wow, this is surprising because usually uh, I'll explain that and then it'll be at least like two no's. But that's because people fear the stock market. It's fearful because they believe they're, they're about to go to Harvard and all of this other stuff, right? So big green candlesticks represents, represents strong buying pressure, okay? So when I see something, a, a red or green candlestick, I know what it did. It opened here when it's low is here, when it's high is here, but close here. In red, I know looking at this that it had to open here, had to go as high as here, then went to this low and then close here. So that represents strong selling pressure and usually is carried with high volume. Okay. So nine times out of 10, these things are carried with high volume. So then we have dojis, right? dojis then we have dragonfly doji then we have graystone dojis long leg dojis right we have all of these things 
combined, correct? Now, oh, let me explain these. Dojis are when the open and the close are virtually the same. So what does this mean? Going over it quickly, it opened here, when it's high is here, when it's low is here, but closed here. Now this open here, but sellers push the prices down, then buyers came back in control to push the prices up, closing near the opening price. This open here, it was once a big old bullish candle. It was once green. And then sellers came back in control to push the prices down. And then it closed near the opening price. And then this one is self-explanatory. Open here, went up here, went down here, but closed here. So you guys are smart enough to get that. Now we're going to hop straight into candlestick patterns. Candlestick patterns are good in my opinion, on the daily charts and weekly charts, but most importantly, the daily chart. And we see a lot of these, like you're gonna see on my Sunday watch list, some pin bars and some hammers, correct? So the reason I want to teach you guys this is because candlesticks represent psychology. They were used to trade rice by the Japanese back in the day. So let's get into the patterns. So I'm going to teach you guys my high probability patterns. This is the most high probability pattern. And in fact, I can show you guys some of these on the chart. So this is called your pin bar. And the reason why it's not called a hammer is because in order for it to be classified as a hammer, it must close at the high. And rarely will you see bullish hammers close at the high. You will always see a wick on top. So that is why we call them pin bars, because they are usually pinned at a support level. And when they're pinned at a support level, they represent strong, they represent a strong reversal coming. So let me get my red piece of pin out here. Now, as you can tell, I, I teach often because I'm very fluent with this, right? So let's pretend like this was a downtrend, right? And this was a red candle. Now. This was a downtrend, right? And this was once a red candle too. So remember, candlesticks represent psychology. So what is this candlestick telling us? This is telling us that this was once a red candle, but then bulls came back in control. So it opened here, was, was a huge red candle following the trend, then bulls, then the bears pushed it down. So it was once a big red candle. So let's pretend, you know, it was a big red candle. Bulls bought the prices back up, pushed higher than the opening price and went as high as here, but closed here. So what does that represent? A major reversal. So that shows that at the end of a downtrend, there's a major reversal. This right here is one of the most high probability candlestick patterns, single-handedly. It doesn't require two candlesticks. It requires one, and it needs to be at some form of support, meaning bottom. And then this is the opposite, correct? So this would be the psychology, same as if this was, let me go to drawings. There we go. So this would be the psychology of if this was a big uptrend, correct? And prices were going up, and then this was once a big green candlestick, right? But then next thing you know, bulls came back down to sell at the end of an uptrend at a resistance point and then push the prices lower. So what does that represent? That represents a reversal. So whenever you see long wicks, that always represents signs of reversals. You see what I'm saying? Because this was once a big green candlestick. Uh, the sellers came back in control to push the prices down and it closed at the low but rarely will you see things close at the low. It'll always be a whip. That's why we call them pin bars. Now, there's more. Oops, let me delete all this, okay? Now, pin bars, you can look at them like a lollipop with a rocket ship attached to it, okay? So that's what pin bars are. Pin bars are nothing but lollipops with rocket ships attached to them. Or you can look at it as an astronaut bending his knees, right? 
and jumping as high as he can off support or resistance, right? And we will go over that next. So that's what I like to look at pin bars as, as lollipops or an astronaut bending their knees and jumping as high as they can with zero gravity, right? So if you look right here, this is a pin bar. So we draw a line of support. We can just take, we, I can teach you support right now. Support is your floor. Just like if you were to buy support beams or when you're building a house, you have to build it on support beams, correct? So this is support. You see one bounce, two bounce, and you see a pin bar at support, at a previous support line. And what happens? One bounce, two bounce, and it goes bunkers. Why? Because this was, you got to look at the psychology. The buyers came back in control at a key level and pushed the prices higher after a downtrend, correct? And then what happens as a result? The prices go higher. Let's look at it some more. Uh, let me try. Oops. I don't even know. There we go. I could just press that button. Let me clear the uh, drawings. So once again, we have AMD at this support level, right? And look, one touch, two touch, three touch, right? So lots of touches of this support line that was once. So resistance is your ceiling. So at one point in time, this was a resistance level and then it, then it got broken, right? And now it turned into support. So support is your floor, resistance is your ceiling, the top of things. So this, for instance, if we were, if I was to draw the resistance here, correct? Oops. Come on now. They messing up my flow. So right here, right? This is a pin bar at support. Let me try to draw the resistance. So you guys can really see this. This would be resistance, the top of this thing. Well, actually, this would be resistance. Let me move all this out of the way. I couldn't see that top candle. Let me try to select this thing. There we go. So actually, this would be resistance. See that? Why? Because if we do the touches, one, two, three, four, five. So I can easily draw the support and resistances. And this is just nothing but a channel. You buy here, sell here. I mean, well, not really, you don't sell. You really buy here and you sell here, my fault. You buy the breakout, sell here, buy, buy, sell, buy, right? So that's how you play channels like this, horizontal channels. All right. I think I'm moving too fast. I think my Wi-Fi is slow. Okay, there we go. Now, here, here are two lollipops. I've been trying to save this slide for a minute. Let me get all these uh, lines off. So why did I show you guys two lollipops? I'm about to tell you why. Because all of you guys are going to answer the same thing. Which one of these are you guys' favorite? Just, just mark it down. Which one, of, which one of these guys are your favorite? Somebody said red. Okay. Cherry, both. Green. Okay, both. So, usually, right? Usually nine times out of ten. See, I, I don't For one, where is everybody from? Just real quick. Because that will probably explain why the green one isn't their favorite. At, okay. If you're from Atlanta, you better say that green one your favorite. <laughs> okay pr all of that okay cool so just like these lollipops right we love the green one but we also love the red one so i i brought this example because realistically we like both of them both of them are acceptable but it's something about that green one that's so tasty right now both of them work in the stock market. Both of these lollipops work. So why did I say that? For the next slide. You see that? We have a green one, but then we also have a red one at a form of support.
correct? So you see right here, this is a, a support line, but it's a diagonal one, correct? So we have a green one, which is a pin bar, and then we have a red one, but this one are equally important. So I like to give people examples so they'll never forget it. Always remember, both lollipops are tasty, okay? So they both count as pin bars because it's a reversal. It's about that wick, but it has to be a long wick. Like this is not a pin bar. See what I'm saying? This isn't a pin bar. This one isn't either because it's not at a form of support. It must be at a form of support to be very effective. So don't buy this one, buy this one or this one. You want them on pullbacks like this. You see what I'm saying? I like to buy off pullbacks. So remember, don't buy them when they're in the middle of something. Buy them when they're at a support line, correct? And you see how that thing went up. And this is Amazon, okay? So this is a real chart. This is a real stock, right? And once again, let me go ahead and delete this. Okay, once again, support. You guys get the whole pin bar game. Now we can go, and here's a bearish pin bar. See what I'm saying? You guys get it. We're at the uptrend, bearish pin bar, all of that, right? Now, let's get into this one. This is called your bullish engulfing pattern. So I would like to call pin bars and bullish engulfings 1A and 1B. They're both equally high probability setups, okay? So I prefer, I can't tell you which one I prefer, over the other one, but I will say pin bars will be number one. I can't lie to you. Bullish and go things work second best. Pin bars work first best, but I recommend taking both when you see this pattern on the daily chart, correct? But you want to see them at forms of support and resistances. Don't just buy them in the middle of a trend. You need to see that trend pull back if you're going to buy during the middle, right? So this is a downtrend, correct? And what happens? At the end of a downtrend, a green candle engulfs, fully engulfs the first day, right? So the next day previous, so the second day engulfs the first day. Now, what does that represent? So I do want to give you guys some quick game on this because a lot of people get this confused. This wick right, can be as long as it wants to be, it will still count as an engulfing pattern, correct? Why? Because it's about the body engulfing the other body, and I'll explain more, and, and vice versa here. It's about the real body. See what I'm saying? This wick can be as long as it wants to be. It'll still count as an engulfing pattern because the body, it's about the body engulfing it. So let's look at two examples of why I say that. Two funny examples. So for one, here's Pac-Man, right? So when I look at engulfing patterns, I'm looking and I'm treating it like it's Pac-Man, right? So remember, you see it at a form of resistance. When you see a, a, a uptrend and you see a big red candle engulf the green candle's real body, that is an engulfing pattern. Even if it's engulfed by a hair, as long as the price is bigger, it counts, okay? So look at this. We have some form of support, downtrend, engulfing. You see that? And you see how the wicks go outside, but this is still an engulfing pattern. The body engulfs it. We even have one here. The body engulfs it here, and then it keeps going up. Now, the reason, so you got to look at it like this. Imagine you eating a spider, right? And the legs hanging outside of your mouth, right? You ate the body of a spider, but the legs are hanging outside of your mouth. That's how you got to treat engulfing patterns. So who here would, has ate a spider before? No one? Ah, uh, so this, this is the funny thing. You can look this up, Google it. They say on average, every American, everybody uh, swallows at least like 
they said like two spiders a year, but like everyone like swallows at least 10 spiders in their lifetime because they might be small. They crawl in your mouth while you sleep and you never know it. So look that up. I'm serious. Google it. We've all probably sp swallowed a spider before and didn't know it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So it's the truth. I know I, it's the harsh truth. Now, you see here, we have a bullish engulfing pattern, right? Now, I have a secret. Bullish engulfing patterns are best off 200 MAs, which we will go over. But really, I go over in, a, uh, in my course, AM University, and you know, I have a chat, all that stuff. But we go over that as far as these MAs, and I will go over them briefly when I get to my chart, because instead of just going over this whole little course thing i'm just going to bring up a chart and just freestyle and, and teach you guys right because i'm good at that too i can literally do a whole course in in two hours so 200 ma's that's when they're the best and then as you can see at this resistance here at the top we have a engulfing pattern right and it and completely washes down the trend now your stop loss if you were to enter puts here your stop loss will be the top of this candle, right? So puts bet on the stop to go down for options. So options, so people say options are so risky. Options are so risky. But when you have setups and what we call high probability setups, which I'm giving you guys, uh, you got your pin bar. So, so far we have two. We have two for sure high probability setups, two. Now I have about 20 of them. OK, so that is why I'm able to capitalize in the market. I have figured out a way to make money in some of the worst conditions in the stock market. Now, let's get let's go over this. These are bullish Haramis and uh, bearish Haramis, right? So this is a downtrend, correct? So Harami means pregnant in Japanese. So. Basically, it's the opposite of a bullish engulfing. Remember, chart patterns move from left to right. So here's a downtrend, and then we have this right here, right? And what happens? It moves upward. And then we have an uptrend, right? And then we have a, a pregnant person, pregnant woman, and then it moves downward, correct? So how do I like to look at this? Okay, I like to look at this as, like I said, Harami means pregnant in, in, in uh, Japanese. And here goes Drake cover, right? Did you guys listen to this album, by the way? It was dope. What was y'all favorite song? Name one song off this album. Just one. Fair Trade, TSU, TSU. Okay. Girls Like Girls. Okay, Girls Want Girls. <laughs> y'all funny. All right. So this is how this works. Here's a here's a married couple, right? A married couple. They're uh, not having such a good time. They're arguing, yada, yada, yada. And then she has a baby and then everything is good. Right. So the baby fixes their marriage or their relationship. How many of you have had a baby and it fits your uh, relationship? No, okay, <laughs> no, <laughs> people put dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Dang, everyone on mute, man. <laughs> All right, cool. So once again, we have an uptrend and then uh, the couple uh, started, you know, they were at a high and then uh, they started having problems, had a baby and there you go. That's how you remember the uh, uh, Harami for the rest of your life. Now, you guys have no idea why I have this up here, do you? Okay, my analogies are crazy now, I know, I know. You guys have no idea why I have this up here. So I'm going to explain it to you guys, all right? Somebody said that shit don't work, but they would make it worse. So here we go, This here we go. It's a bunch of young women, so imagine this scene, right? We're, it's summertime, we're in Miami, um, a whole bunch of college girls in the Nissan Altima saying, hey, 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 right? And then one of them gets pregnant, hot girl summer, over, okay? 
So that's what bearish Haramis mean. Okay. It means that when when I know that's that's the funniest one. That's my that's my funny one. Okay. That's my funny one, right? So a bunch of girls riding in the Nissan Altima saying A, A, and then next thing you know, one of them gets pregnant and the trend is over. We got to go back home, you know, no more hot girl summer. Now, how many people hot girl summers or, or hot boy summers have been ruined by pregnancy? Put a me. <laughs> they said, yo, I'm visualizing the ratchet shit. <laughs> I'm just playing with y'all, man. So how do you enter these patterns? You enter these patterns by 15 cents above the highs, 15 cents above the highs, 15 cents above the high. So what exactly does that mean? That means if the high of the day is 100, I will enter the next day at 115, 115 cents. If the high of the day is 99, I'm entering the next day at 99.15. If the high of the day of this pattern is 98, 98.15 is my entry. Why? Because false breakouts can happen. And a lot of times we want, we want it to break out first to show strength. So don't be too quick to get into things. One thing you'll learn is you'll never catch every candle. You'll never catch every single trend. If you try to, you will lose money. You need to take what you can get in the market based on, on your setups. So option trading can be risky because everyone wants to be a genius instead of realizing that you can't beat the market. You can't beat them. What you can do, yes, you can beat the market, but if that's your goal, you're going to lose. You know what I'm saying? But if your goal is to pimp the market, you get what I'm saying, take what you can get, then you're going to win. You get what I'm saying? When you're not greedy and you just like, okay, I just want this. I just want that. Soon that start adding up over time versus, okay, I'm trying to flip my money. So a lot of people go in trying to flip instead of trying to leverage their money. And we're going to go over that too. So we're buying puts. We're going 15 cents below. 15 cents below, 15 cents below, right? So support and resistance, it's time to get into the uh, thing, right? So we can go here, we can go to trading view. Can you guys see my screen? So I already briefly went over support and resistance, but this is trading view. And I do recommend you guys buying a, uh, you know, a subscription to them. Let me move this. Let me try to move this thing up. This thing is totally in my way. Is there a way to move this? There we go. Okay. Yeah, we moved it to the top. So as you can see, I have a whole bunch of lines up. But let's go to one of the trades that I like, okay? So I'm going to not even sugarcoat it for you guys. And honestly, I can set up my whole chart right in front of you guys again. So what does this have? This has all of my favorite indicators. Let's go to one that doesn't have anything on it. This has my, my stuff on it. We can add a MACD to that. This one doesn't have anything on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear uh, remove drawings and indicators from this one. I'm going to set up the whole chart, how I set up mine, and I want to explain the uh, the reasoning behind it. So first of all, okay, now do not laugh at me, but my name on TradingView is Mr. Longstroke96. I did not give my name. I did not name myself that. You know, it just happens. You know how things just happen, right? So I know I'm undefeated with these jokes. I know. I should be a stand-up comedian. Okay. So I was born in 96 and I didn't give myself the uh the name prior to that. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is inappropriate, Prince Donnell. Stop me if it is. <laughs> I'm on your platform. All right. But it's just a little fun. So 
I like to switch minds to the dark theme. I feel like we all grown here. You guys are buying NFTs. I think you got to be uh, 18 years or older to buy NFT. I'm not sure. But, you know, don't if, if my jokes offend you, because I know we live in a new generation of I'm offended, I'm offended, right? So uh, my jokes offend you, let me know. Now, we're on a dark theme. So I have no indicators present. We're going to explain every single indicator just a little briefly, right? And then I'm going to, I don't want to hold you guys too long. I might end this in the next 30 minutes after I explain these charts. And then we go over some trades that I like and why I like them. So this is Facebook for one. This is Facebook, right? And if I was trying to chart Facebook, what would I look for? I would look for noise. So I see that Facebook fell to this resistance. I mean, this support. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here. Well, first of all, let me add my indicators. That's first of all. This uh, Zoom little thing is so aggravating. This little thing with the us on the side. But right here is the indicators. And you're going to see my indicators pop up right here. So I'm going to click the moving average five times. Simple moving average. So you can either go to, you can go to technicals and just type it in if you don't want to, you know. Moving average, one, two, three, four, five. I have five moving averages up, right? So now it's my job to change them into what I want them to be. So the first thing I'm going to change this to is the eight. These are the, this is really how I trade. So pay attention. Eight. Okay. Then we're going to use the 21 MA, simple moving average. So what is simple moving average? Simple moving average is simply the moving average. So this dynamic line moves, if you add the last 21 days from right now to here, right? All it does is carry on the last average of the 21 days. All you got to do is add together the last closing prices of the last 21 days and divide it by 21. And this line is the number of, of what that is. And then even the eight, the eight moving average is calculated by literally adding up the last closing prices of the last eight days, and then dividing them by eight, just like elementary school, right? So you guys should know that, how to find the average of something. Okay, so now we're on the 50 moving average. Now with these, I like to make them a tad bit thicker in purple. I like to keep my 50 purple and a little thick, you know what I'm saying? It's a tad bit thick, not too thick, right? And then we have this one, this is gonna be my 100 MA. So 100 MA is actually imp more important than you guys think. So now I have my 100 MA up. And then I also want, lastly, my 200 MA. So this is the most important MA. So I'm going to briefly explain every MA. And I'm going to make this one orange. And we're going to make this one super thick. Th -th 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 thick, right? So let's get into it. I'm I'm a bit of a uh, I like to joke around and stuff so uh don't don't pay too close attention to me. All right, let me uh get this up here. And let's get started cuz this uh little zoom thing is so aggravating. Like the uh faces and stuff. So I had to move my chart up. Cool. Now, let's get right into it. Why do I use every MA? Let's break it down. So, for one, the green MA the AMA is the one where, so you see how it broke trend right here, right? The AMA is when things are going parabolic in a straight up line, and then it'll pull back first to the eight, and it'll ride the eight. You see what I'm saying? So the eight is the is the trend rider. Okay, let's go to SPY, because Facebook kind of choppy. This one. Do not call me yet. I'm doing a class. Let's get it. So you see how like with this one, when things are going parabolic, you see how it bounced off the 100 for one. 
But when things are going parabolic, the AMA is usually where it bounced from, right? And the 21 is all, it's just all about your last line of defenses. So if it, if it breaks the eight, it's going to bounce at the 21. As you saw, it bounced at the 21. And then after it breaks the 21, it's naturally going to the 50 and it's going to bounce. And if it breaks the 50, where is it going? To the 100. And you see, this is the real market. This is SPY, S&P 500. I might have to delete all these drawings, but I slick don't want to because, you know, I understand these things, but I know you guys might not understand all these support lines. But for the grace of you guys, I will do it. Don't really want to. New drawings are replicated to all charts. I'm going to have to take these off. Okay. So we're going to remove these drawings. Cool. So I want to make this simple for you guys. I can just go in and chart it all over again. I'll chart my uh, support resistances all over again. I need to anyways. So the 100 is what, and honestly, I regret this trade, but let's go over some things, right? So when I'm charting SPY, the first thing I want to do is for one, draw my support and resistance levels and keep my MAs up. So SPY fell to the 8MA and got caught, but we're going to use top-down analysis and show everything. So 200 is the last line of defense after it breaks the 100. So you saw how, for one, how many times, you got to go back and study too. SPY hit the 100, bounced. Hit the 100 MA, bounced. So as you can see, this is an important MA, moving average, moving average. Then the 200 is a magnet. One thing you'll always see is that eventually things do have to come back to the 200. So this was the this is uh this is when COVID first hit China, then it came to the U.S. around this time, then it bounced off the 50. But we were like, what's going on? Why is this thing not dropping yet? And finally, this is when COVID 19 happened. And literally, I was in the army. I got out of the army this day, March 20th. Uh, actually, I got an army March 20th, 2020. So, yep, the day, the day before the lowest day, I got out right here, March 20th, 2020. I got out of the army. Yes, I was an option trader and everything. So I got out at the bottom and I got out and bought a whole bunch of stocks and got even more rich. So I got double blessed. It was a blessing to get out of the army, and it was a blessing that I got out at the bottom with all this money, right? And bought the bottom, made a lot, made a killing made a killing right to this day i'm eating from stuff i bought during this time okay as you can see so we were talking about this and, and remember the 200 ma well is a magnet you'll always see the 200 ma uh bob you will see stocks bob and weed from the 200 ma from the 200 ma right so what am i looking for when it comes to some of these trades, we're gonna go over some quick things about day trading and swing trading. So for one, I showed you guys candlesticks, right? So I saw this earlier, whenever, I'm gonna give you guys just some quick tips. Whenever you see demand, a whole bunch of wicks at a support line, especially if it adds up in confluence with other support lines. So we draw this line, right? Straight across, what do we see? Touches, 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 touches. Hold up. Yo, I'm doing a class right now. I'll call you back. Yeah, I'll call you right after. All right. So you see touches of the support line and confluence with the, with the 100 MA. And then you see this one. It's chilling at the 100 MA and also touching support line. So confluence is when one, when more than one thing adds up. So as you can see, what do I see? I see demand at this support line. Demand, demand, demand. So I knew SPY was gonna bounce. If you saw my last watch list, I said SPY is showing strong demand. So one thing I learned is when you see a bunch of bounces, something is going to happen, okay? Something is always going to happen when you see a bunch of bounces. Now. I also noticed that the, the 100 MA is important. So I also figured that this would reject here. And let's go over why I, I knew it would reject here. So we're on the daily chart, right? 
Let's go over top down analysis. So one thing I like to do is go from the four hour chart, right? And you can kind of see now why, why SPY rejected near the 100. So we can draw this trend line, right? We can go from right here. So here's another strategy, three touches, the third touch strategy, one touch of resistance, two touches of resistance, then you buy puts on the third touch. So that is why SPY dropped. But not only did it drop at, at that resistance point, but it also added up in confluence with the 100 in May, which I saw this rejecting from because this used to be previous, you know, support. And now after it broke down, it turns into resistance. So it was confluence here. The confluence was the 100 and this resistance line, correct? And even then, if you go to the four hour chart or even the one hour, I really love the one hour because the one hour tells it all. You know what I'm saying? The one hour chart tells it all. So I like to go to the one hour. And there it goes right here. So the first breakout we took, this was the bottom when I was saying all of this demand was here. We can even delete these MAs real quick. So those are my MAs. Now let's go over something too, volume. We forgot to add volume. So we gotta go to indicators, we can add volume. That's going to be down here, correct? Let me get this out of here. So let's chart this bad boy. This is SPY, this is off near the 200 MA. And what do we see? We see another downtrend right here, correct? What do we see? Another downtrend. So uh, we got one touch, two touch, three touch, or you can even say this one is the third touch. But this is when you buy puts at touches, third touches of resistance or third touches of resistance here, right? And, and, the, and vice versa for support. You buy on the third touch of support. But when it breaks this support line with volume, that is a good sign. So whenever I like to go to the one hour chart, and look to see if the trend was broken with rising volume. So you see this volume spike whenever it broke this trend, that's why it went up because it broke this trend after strong demand. So we go to the daily chart, this is what it looks like. It doesn't look so pretty anymore. See what I'm saying? So that's why it's important to use top-down analysis so you can really see what's going on. See what I'm saying? Because you probably could miss this on the daily chart. See what I'm saying? You could have missed all of that. It doesn't look so pretty on the daily chart. So that's why top-down analysis, I always go and I go to the four-hour chart. Then I go to the one-hour chart so I can really see where the action is happening. Because now I can see there's strong demand here, strong demand here, strong demand here at this level, this previous level that it was strong demand at before. See what I'm saying? So we go back in history. Look at that. Strong demand. So stocks is all about history and, and, and things repeating itself so strong demand here strong demand here strong demand here so what does that tell me when i see a bunch of wicks and a bunch of candles buyer stepping in buyer stepping in buyer stepping in buyer stepping in at support i know that things might want to go bunkers then i gotta go and i gotta draw my lines and see what's going on so let's go and get back to the daily chart and let's add our indicators, two indicators that I want to go over, correct? So this indicator is called our RSI. And I do use this indicator, relative strength index. And we're going to do some uh, things on it. Then we want to go to MACD, which stands for Moving Average, Converge, and Diverge, which I go over more in the AMU course, you know what I'm saying, the uh, course that you guys know I have and all of that. If you guys aren't familiar with me, you can follow me on Instagram, uh, at Aristotle Investments. So I'm going to take off, I'm going to make this thing yellow, the RSI line yellow. I'm going to remove this RSI MA. And I'm going to make the upper band red for selling and the lower band green. Oh, this is Belanger band. What in the world is this? 
not sure. Oh, there it goes, the upper band right here. Here we go, boom. And then the lower band green. And you don't have to make them, you know, you can make them thicker if you want to. So what does this mean? It's pretty simple. The RSI has a level of 30, as you can see right here, and then the level of 70. All this does is tell you when something is oversold or overbought. So when prices are too high, the RSI, if it reaches past level 30, that's the market trying to tell you that prices are too high and it might drop. So the beauty of the market is you have indicators. So this is another reason I felt like people, I don't know, like one thing I learned is that the charts will always tell it all. I understand everyone wants to watch the news. Everyone wants to do this and that. I personally watch zero news and I can make six figures in a week. Why? Because everyone was scared here, correct? But I'm trying to tell everyone, look, it's green. The R is at RSI, I went to level 24, where this thing is going to bounce and demand is showing, bulls are stepping in. So this is called confluence. Like I told you guys, we have overbought, well, oversold, my fault, oversold, right? Oversold signals plus demand and a support level. So that's all reasons to buy. Is it not? Is it not all reasons to buy when you have one, two, and three reasons to buy, correct? So let's go over a trade that I like, which is PayPal, which is another reason to buy. So look at PayPal, look how beautiful this thing looks. By the way, I'm in like a lot in this thing because this should go, this should boom, why? Because for one, it fell at a 90 degree angle. Always buy good companies when they're oversold, especially like this. So the reason why I waited on PayPal to get to this level was because I knew that it was going to bounce at this level, correct? At this level. So PayPal came down and came back to, to test what used to be resistance, but turned support. And it filled that gap. Here's a gap, right? So PayPal has a gap, as you can see, in all gaps, they say all gaps eventually get filled, but you know what I'm saying? That's true, but not true. So here's the gap, correct? So PayPal wanted to fill this gap and it did with this candlestick, correct? As you can see, it filled the gap. Even if we go and extend this thing as much as we want, look at that, it filled the gap and we have a high probability candlestick pin bar at support in confluence with being oversold. So what does that tell you? One, two, so we have two reasons to buy this thing. You get what I'm saying? We have a pin bar, really three, a gap fill, a pin bar, and oversold conditions. So this, and one thing I will say is, whenever you get a pin bar in, in confluence with the RSI, there's a chance that things will bounce, correct? So let me see if I can find, uh, uh, I think Amazon did this, if I'm not mistaken. Was it Amazon who did this with the pin bar with the oversold levels? But even then, look at Amazon, correct? Amazon showed demand here, right? And, and when, whenever Amazon is oversold, you buy. Okay, so Facebook is currently oversold. Okay, so regardless of what anyone tells you, always buy good companies when they're oversold. Like, well, I say take the risk on them because they will bounce. Okay, so that's one thing I like to do is buy a good company when they're oversold. And the MACD, I won't really get into this one because we run out of time. But the MACD is one of my favorite indicators to use. And let me see some more things I can show you guys. So for one, PayPal is one of my favorites. It was another, if PayPal and Facebook are uh, on my top. Now, as far as where the market is going, we go to SPY. Um, I have to bring up my MAs.
So as far as where the market is going, for one, we have a bullish cross on the MACD, which let me go ahead and edit this real quick. So let me show you guys what I do with the MACD. I make it green. The, uh, what is this, the MACD line, I like to make it green and a little thicker. And then the slower line, I like to make purple, right? And make it a little thicker. So why do I use these colors? Simple. Hulk from Marvel. So you guys watch uh, Hulk. That's the only reason I use them because I wanted some colors that I could easily remember that I'll never forget, right? So we have the MACD. All this means is this. Pretty simple. When the, uh, when the green line crosses below the purple line, that represents a cell signal. So you see that? Green cross below the purple, cell signal. When the green crosses above, right, when the, when, the, when the faster line, which is the green line, so the green line is your 9 EMA, and I think the, uh, the purple one is your 12, right? But that's neither here nor there. You just need to know how to use them. So the green line crosses below the purple. When it crosses above, this is a buy signal. See that? So it crossed above. It told you to buy right here. So it, told, it started crossing right here, told you to buy. Then it told you to sell. See what I'm saying? We go straight up, told us to sell right here. Then it told us to buy again. But one thing about uh, the MACD, it doesn't work if it's choppy. So you'll see what it's called whipsaws. Like you see right here where it crossed and then crossed below and then this and that. So whenever it's choppy and ranging, it doesn't work. It's a trend following indicator. See what I'm saying? So now this one is crossing up, but my only concern is this resistance. It's probably going to get back up here and reject. We can draw this thing right. So SPY could be bullish, come back up here, reject. The only way this thing would be bullish is if it uh, breaks here. See what I'm saying? If it breaks this uh, white line. That's the only way I see the market being bullish, but that's the only skeptical thing. But Stocks like PayPal have to bounce, okay? That's a high probability setup. It doesn't get more high probability than this. You have oversold conditions with a pin bar at the bottom of it. You see what I'm saying? So options can be risky, but you just have to use risk management. So I'm going to end this lesson about this, some risk management following strategies. One leverage your money instead of trying to double your money right so when i'm day trading i'm i'm using a strategy called more size less trades so a lot of times people like to try to turn uh 500 into 1000 but me instead what i would do is i would use two thousand dollars and then take profits at what 20 percent 25%, whatever it is to make 500. So I would use, uh, uh, what is that? That's 25%. So 25% on a trade isn't hard to get. So I like to use more size to make money. You know what I'm saying? Instead of using less size to try to double it. So that way I can take profits at lower percentages and let them add up over time. You see what I'm saying? So that's what you do. Leverage your money. Don't try to go all in and flip it. Keep trying to leverage. Keep trying to fire at it. Keep trying because gains add up. If we do the math, what, there's 250 option trading days a year. If you make one, see $100 is the easiest thing to make. I can make $100 with my eyes closed, right? Without even thinking about it. I don't even go in and try to play for 100 anymore. That's not even my style. I, I feel like it's unacceptable to make it. But at the same time, $100 every day is $25,000 added to your salary per year. You don't, you don't need a boss. You didn't have to negotiate no deal. You didn't have to kiss no ass. You didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to talk to nobody. So that is why I, I have my freedom because I know at any given time I can go make 10 to 20,000 
without talking to a, to any man. So I walk different and I talk different. I don't have to talk to nobody to make money. And you don't either. You know what I'm saying? All you need is high probability setups and wait for them to happen. Patience, leveraging your money, not going all in, using risk management. Meaning if you have a $10,000 account, you should only be playing with 10% of your profits, meaning $1,000. So that so that case, if you lose that 1,000, you got $9,000 more to try again. You see what I'm saying? But see, a lot of people would use $5,000 out of their 10, lose that 5,000 and complain the next day about why options are hard, but really they lack discipline and they don't have what is called high probability setups. So if you're interested in learning more, Follow me on Instagram. Uh, join my uh, AMU University. I teach the full course as far as the advanced stuff, the day trading part, all of that stuff. And yeah, I'm going to uh, pass the mic to whoever. And I hope you guys enjoyed me as a teacher and also as a person. And I hope I gave you guys some good laughs. All right. Yo, that was, can y'all hear me? Y'all can hear me, right? Hey, I just want to say, man, number one, Aristotle, bro, you got to be one of the best presenters. And, I, and I'm not going to lie. I judge, I judge presenters, man, because you know, I, I consider myself to be a, I consider myself to be a great speaker, you know, and um, I pride myself on, on making great presentations. And I got to tell you, most people don't make me laugh because I don't find them funny. I find you funny. That was like, I'm not going to lie. That was, that was, that was informative. And then it was also, you know, informative, educational, entertaining, man. And that's a very challenging thing to do. You know, which shows the love, the 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 season, uh, how seasoned you are in this, man. You know, everybody don't got that. You know, that that takes a lot. It takes a lot to do. But the education around that was crazy. And uh, yeah, man, I'm 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 tapped in. You know, uh, so I right, listen. I appreciate you, man. The 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 knowledge in this thing was crazy, mind blowing. Uh, and everybody that's here, I hope you really got this because just that information in itself. And that was just a small piece of what he even offered compared to everything that he offers in his entire community alone, right? So make sure that y'all follow him ASAP and, uh, and, 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 and tap into whatever it is that he's offering because that was just a small piece. But I'll tell y'all, man, y'all, just that small piece already should already make you some type of money if you put the dots together and you stay disciplined like you said and I love the last part of what you said man stay in discipline you know that's the biggest piece of it all whether it be investing business whatever it is the discipline has to line up with what you're doing or you lose money it's pretty simple uh bro I appreciate you thank you for your time thank you for your wisdom thank you for your skill sets um, you know, we give you your flowers now, man, for everything that you do culture wise. And uh, I want all y'all to do the same. And um, I hope y'all had an amazing time here tonight. We're going to keep this thing going. Keep bringing knowledge. Keep bringing education. Keep tapping in um, <clears throat> and keep winning from here.